And I'll do the same. <sighs> you, you can bring it up if you want. Okay. You're, You're listening, listening to, to the, the dollop, dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. This is an American history podcast. Each week, I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to a guy I know. Named Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Oh, you don't? No. It sounds like you hate me. It really does. <laughs> it's coming across in the intro. Yeah. I don't know if you've read the Reddit, buddy, but... I did read that Reddit comment let's go let's oh, this fight i do but not on air we're in character now once we're no, off this then it can real. be the palpable awkwardness people don't know that when we're not when we're not on recording when we're not recording we usually punch each other in the face about seven times a minute yeah yep yep so so it's just over one every 10 seconds yeah 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 no i mean it's weird who knows dave who knows that guy also sent me a private message saying how mean i was to you Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, I like. I like this guy. I don't know who he is and what he's doing, but... He's on top of things. Yeah, he gets it. No, we clearly hate each other. I mean, people... Um, what are the two guys? Uh, is it K-Rock or... There's a, there's oh, a, there's uh, a, a two uh, morning guys in L.A. and they hate each other like, so uh, much... Like Kevin and Bean? ...that one moved to Seattle... And had a T1 installed in his house. And so they haven't been in the same room in like eight years. And they do morning radio every morning. And people think they're in the same room. And they hate each other's guts. It's great. I can't wait. That's that's squad goals. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to get there. (laughs) His jam patch. I called it, quote, his jam patch. Jam patch? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. (laughs) My name's Gary. Wait, is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> room, now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep till hippo. No sleep till hippo. <laughs> Action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely done, my friend. No. <laughs> no. Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. What? You know what? Just based on the the what you were just doing, what I wasn't uh, doing anything. sexualizing your phone, uh, we should let people know that if they want to see the podcast, this episode, yeah. you can go to the All Things Comedy YouTube page, uh, where we have a bunch of dynamic performances by us. Um, I wasn't sexualizing; I was being an idiot. You were sexualizing your phone. No, I was. I was sticking my tongue out like a moron. I was. No, was, but you were uh, licking like you were. It was. Pretty Body. hot. Pretty rad. It was hot. Is it pretty rad. It rad hot. and hot. It's hot. Yeah. It's <laughs> a niche I'm into. Uh, you got dates coming up? What are you I looking do. at your phone for? I do. I got a slew of dates. Yeah. Slew. Slew of dates. Uh, so I will be a lot of places this summer. Uh, I will be June 6th through the 8th. I'll be at Good Nights Comedy Club in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'll be in Burlington, Vermont at the Vermont Comedy Club, June 13th through the 15th. The Comedy Attic in Bloomington, Indiana, the 20th through the 22nd. June 27th through the 29th, I'll be at Comedy Off-Broadway, Lexington, Kentucky, not to be confused with one on Broadway. In July 19th and 20th, I'll be at Laughs Boston in July. Then August 9th through the 11th, uh, the Improv in Denver. Seattle, uh, July 17th, I'll be at the Fremont Abbey. And then it will all culminate... Uh, at Comedy on State in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, August 22nd through the 24th. It will culminate? Yeah. Oh, and I'll be recording an album on the Saturday show, August 24th. That's what you say. Yeah. I'll be recording. Not I'll culminate. I'm it recording culminates. an album. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it's a, I, we'll get there. I'm record. No, you we'll get, get people there. incited now. You get them buying tickets. Would some people are going to fly in. Some people are going to fly in. The Reddit, look, people. Come on. This is an act. Yes. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> yeah, so that weekend in August, one of those nights, I'll tell. I'll say which one I'll be recording an album soon. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be great. It'll be great. Um, it's on your niece's birthday. That was a mistake. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She mentioned that last night. I we did. went to the LAFC last. Do you ever go to those games? LAFC? I haven't been yet. Dude, they are so great. It's so great. That might be the best sport to see in Los Angeles. Uh, hockey. Yeah, but mm. when we went, I mean, how sad was that? Well, that's t- they were terrible. Like, they can't play hockey right now, but... Previously, it's the best. That was the night we hung out with Tom Hanks and Mike Royce. We did hang out with Tom, Tom Hanks and Mike, Mike Royce. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, hey, we might have some exciting news coming up about uh, England. We are brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Ah, Garrett Corr. Uh, that's right. Hiring is challenging, but there's one place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates. The place is ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. Now you hire. What do you hire? You, you have people that need to lift a cat, correct? Uh, pe- there's cat lifters. There's uh-huh. a lot of st- stuff. And cat maintenance is a bunch of stuff. Keep, keep the food away from the cat. Keep you got a guy. Keep the food away from the cat. We yep. have fluffers. We have a whole uh-huh. bunch of stuff at Gear Corps. We uh-huh. are a versatile uh, business. Is there anybody that milks the milks the cat? I milk the cat. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. So if you're a cat milker, this is it. Applications come in. ZipRecruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And right now, our listeners, Mm -hmm. Frank and Sandy, Mm -hmm. can try ZipRecruiter for free. What? Get out of here. I said it. What? Yes. At this web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. D-O-L-L-O-P. You guys know how to spell it. ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. Yep. And you've hired how many people? 30,000 people. 30,000 people. Yeah. Zip We're doing, recru- I'm doing an undercover boss. Sure. On Gear Core. I love it. I just to see what things I can change in the yeah. versatile And company. it's all due to ZipRecruiter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Gareth? Yes, David. You sleep, right? Once I did. Once? Yeah. When you sleep, do you sleep on a mattress with no sheets? I sleep on a mattress with terrific sheets. You do? Yeah. So does Jose. Uh, <laughs> well, I bet you're talking about brooklinen.com. Yeah. You spend a third of your life in sheets, hopefully. I'm aiming for a half. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Or three uh, quarters would be just, that's where I need to yeah, be. Yeah, that's right. So, just right at the level where you're not getting bed sores, that's where I want to be. Right, yeah, right below bed sores right is the Right below bed thing. sores where I want to be. Um, well, it's about time for a bedding upgrade. Talk about, oops. <laughs> You're so natural. <laughs> Brooklyn and Sheets were named winner of the best online betting category by Good Housekeeping. Hmm. Uh, bad Housekeeping did not mention them. Yeah, but they're the worst. Yes. Those people are just nightmares. Yeah. yeah. Uh, rave reviews from Business Insider, Apartment Therapy, and Men's Health. 35,000 plus five star reviews, more than any other online betting company. They were founded in early 2014 by husband and wife Vicky and Rich Fulop. Sure. The, the Fulops. Fulops. Yeah. Isn't that a dollop spinoff? <laughs> <laughs> Their mission was to make five-star quality hotel sheets more affordable and easy to order. Luxury sheets without the luxury markup. Most betting is marked up uh, 300%. What? Yeah. Most so sheets are marked up by 300 It's fucking furniture? nonsense is right. what it is. Okay. Now, these guys weren't taking it. Okay. Uh, so the sheets don't, uh, just feel great. They look great too. You of course have a, a dark brown, correct? A chocolate brown. I'm not going to take the bait, but I have, no, I don't actually. You have a, a gray? Gray. And when you sleep and you drool, is there a big, uh, stain situation? Well, what's happening right now? What, what sort of. Does, does, does Jose leave like a, a stain of any sort when he. When he what? The milk comes out of him. Well, I've milked him before bed, dummy. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, what do you think I'm drinking in the night? That's fine. Yeah, cat milk. Uh, Kitty titty milk. Brooklyn and has over. T- <laughs> Brooklyn and has over 25 plus colors and patterns to make your bedroom just right. Our Brooklyn and sheets are the best, most comfortable sheets we've ever slept on. Now it's time for your upgrade. Brooklyn is giving an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Get 10 percent off your first order and free shipping when you use promo code the dollop at Brooklyn and Brooklyn is so confident in their product that all the sheets, comforters, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. The only way to get ten percent off your first order and for shipping is to promo so code. So if the sheet, if the you, you like, if your sh- your sheets, you're like, oh, there's cat out. milk on them. You go, hey, no, guys, that's, I need to do You a new did one. that. If it just like wears through or like a hole pops up or whatever. Okay. It's like not like not I'm like just trying to figure out do. how to game the system. Yeah, I know. Uh, so the only way to get 10% off your first order and free shipping is to use promo code the dollop at brooklinen.com. That's B R O O K L I N E N.com promo code the dollop Brooklinen. These really are the best sheets 
They're Ever. Great sheets. Uh, we are also brought to you by Third Love. Uh, now you enjoy bras. I love a bra. Yeah. Well, third. You can ask my mother. My mother used to find bras in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I'm like, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. We're drinking down here now, just so you know. <laughs> um, look, Third Linen uh, is uh, a brassiere. Oh, that's a bug. It was coming towards me. Thank you. You yes. saved me. Um, Third Linen is a, a bra company. Um, perfect fit. You know that. Yes. Uh, they use data points generated by millions of women who have taken their fit finder quiz to design bras with the breast size and shape in mind for a perfect fit and premium feel. Sure. More sizes than other brands? 70 sizes. More than 70 sizes, including half cup sizes. Interesting. Yeah. So it's like a breakthrough situation. Right, right. Uh, they're very convenient, obviously. You can uh, go on Third Love's online fit finder, order, try it at home, no more awkward fitting room experiences. Well, Awkward for, not for you. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I'm fine with it. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Um, 100% guarantee. Every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. And if you don't love it, return it, and Third Love will wash it and donate to a woman in need. Why? That's I mean, nice. it, why, why would you not just, for shits and giggles, just if you have like 60 days to wear and tear a bra, just order one and go have a little fun. Wear it around town. Just really see what you can do. Play some volleyball. You know what I mean? The look Play you're giving me volleyball. is weird. I'm from it's Wisconsin. It's a bad, and, but yeah. I'm just saying you could really, you know, it's you have two options. Mm -hmm. Get a great bra or just have a fun time. Give, it's sort of like a little bucket <laughs> list with a bra. Just go bananas. <laughs> Third Love's team of expert fit stylists are dedicated to helping you find your perfect fit. Fit stylists are available every day to help via text, chat, or phone. Um, I might I might text someone. Text someone about that bra. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash dollop now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash dollop for 15% off today. Boom. We got to get a jockstrap. Uh, yeah. Sponsor. Yeah, I agree. Let's end the show. What do you mean? Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I zoned out. I, I thought we were about to fight. Do we fight? We now? hate each other and we oh, fight. On, on. No, off air. Oh, off air. Now we're in pretend other. time. Gotcha. Yeah. So, hey, friend. Hi. <laughs> I really like you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> grumble, grumble, grumble. 1875. Okay. The low year of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. This this uh, episode is brought to you by Jesus. There for you. Huh. To save you. You know, after hearing the other ads and his, he just doesn't seem to offer a lot. He, like, not, does he have a promo not, code? No, is there a way to no, get some money he's off he's him? He's super. He's just super into basic, simple stuff. He's like, keep it super real and keep it really quick. Yeah, it's not really yeah. the market for that. Yeah, all right. Edward Eastman was born in Coll Collier's Hook section of Lower Manhattan. I never heard of that. Oh, you, really? Corlears. Corlears Hook section. Okay. What's his name? Have you heard of that? No. Uh, Edward Eastman. Okay. His mom was Mary. His father was Samuel. He was a veteran of the Civil War. Okay. Uh, Samuel was now working as a wallpaper hanger. A great industry at the time. Killing it. Yeah. Killing it. Um, he, uh, so they lived on the Lower East Side for at least five years. Before that, we know they had been in California. They had one son, Willie, who was three in 1870, but then he didn't show up any more censuses, so... We're going to make the assumption. He died or, you Just know, ran off. At three, went yeah, off on his will, own to figure out three. a career. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the time Edward reached five, his dad left. So Samuel's out. Okay, good. Uh, good stuff. Leaving Mary uh, to raise the kids on her own. The family then had to move in with Mary's father, George. Uh, he was living on the Upper East Side. Okay. Uh, his grandfather was 69 and worked in a dry goods store. Sure. For dry stuff. Yeah. For he right. was he was not into wet peppers and jerkies and whatnot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Edward had three sisters, Lizzie, Ida, and Francine. The family had clearly spent some, as I said, California. Um, Samuel died when Edward was fourteen. Okay. Um, he he his dad had remained in the Lower East Side uh, all that time, and he died of consumption in the house 
of rest for consumptives. So he was in the right place to die with it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What should we name it? Well, let's really, let's call it On the Nose Hospital. <laughs> Mary had already been saying she was a widow for years. So she was already like, yeah, he's dead. Okay. So he's just holding up his end of the bargain. Yeah. Right. Uh, Edward was super into animals. Okay. Uh, and, and really he was into pigeons. He really liked pigeons. Okay. He's in uh, the right city. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was very common for kids to catch pigeons or steal them and then sell them back then. Sell a pigeon? Yeah. Who are you selling a pigeon to? The, the pigeons? The pigeon uh, guy. Who is buying a pigeon in the land where you can just go pick up a pigeon, uh, apparently? Bankers. So it's just a uh, deposit, Well, please. you couldn't just pick up a pigeon. You had to catch it. And I don't think it's easy to catch a pigeon. You ever tried to catch a pigeon when you were a kid? No. Not easy. But I've seen Rocky do it. Okay. So that's a chicken. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. People wanted them. So you I just think pick people, up a people pigeon collect and they, pigeons. And what are people doing with the pigeon? Well, Eating it? You know, have you ever seen uh, like one of those movies where there's a guy on a roof and then a guy goes up to talk to him and there's a bunch of pigeons in a cage? What? Yeah. That. That's what's going on. I don't think that's accurate at all. <laughs> that feels very made up. <laughs> but you're just, people are just domesticating the pigeons. Yeah, I think you keep. I think you keep pigeons and uh, and it's a pigeon collection. You don't know. And you have them on a roof. <laughs> And, There's that uh, roof image again. And, uh, you are, you've got no idea. Sometimes John Wick comes up and he's sure, like, hey, I need sure. I need some help. Yeah, or it's John Woo. Yeah, yeah he's just one. like, hey. Um, so the kids who caught pigeons were called pigeon chasers. Sure. So Edward's a pigeon chaser. Great. So he's um, found a good crew. Yep. Uh, then he started keeping some pigeons for himself in a crudely constructed cage on the roof of his building. Okay, so well, don't act like you have been validated by something you knew was coming. Where else are you going to keep <laughs> pigeons in New York? In the fucking basement or in your bedroom? That's right. Yeah, everybody puts them on the roof. Everybody. You've, have you seen movies? You are talking like Trump. Have you seen <laughs> movies? Yes. Oh, you mean these documentaries called fictional movies? Yeah. Don't adjust yourself for anything. Or <laughs> wink. You are out of your mind and out of line. Um, so he, he used to lure them with other pigeons. Hey. So he'd have pigeons, he'd, and then other pigeons would come, and then he'd catch them. Okay. Um, he, could he could trap up to 40 pigeons a week uh, doing this and uh, make money. He could sell them for 10 to 25 cents each. And a factory worker made a buck fifty a day, so he could actually make a decent living as a pigeon chaser. They have to be eating the pigeons. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe they I don't have know. To, if you're selling a pigeon, yeah, th these people are not taking pigeons like oh, I've just been looking for a pet. Maybe they're shooting them or they're um, eating them in some capacity. They might be. Yeah, they might be eating. Them. I think they're eating. Yeah, them. Uh, Edward was also into stealing and fighting a lot. Okay, a couple of hobbies. Sure. The worst depression the country had seen hit in 1893. Thousands out of work. <laughs> we'll show them. The term breadline was created. Ah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that is nice. 6,000 beggars and 10 times as many homeless were in New York City, along with the street kids, which we've obviously discussed. Mm -hmm. um, gangs, of course, uh, preyed on the street kids, and they controlled lower Manhattan. Okay. Edward's grandfather tried to keep him on the straight and narrow, and at one point set him up with his own pet store in Brooklyn. Okay. Because he loves animals. Sure. Well, we talked he's, about that. He's pigeon. He skews pigeon. Well, he likes cats also. I like he likes guy. all animals. I though. like this guy. I'm just a little worried. Um, but then, yeah. then Gramps died, and things went in another direction. Oh, boy. Being a small pet store owner did not suit Edward. Okay. He wanted more. And he was soon hanging out with a gang of pimps and thieves who were known as the Allen Street Cadets. Okay. Edward used Irish names like William Delaney. He, that's what he was going as? Yeah. Okay. Because it's better to be Irish how, and how down there. how old is he now? Uh, he's still a teenager. Okay, so um, late teens. Late probably. teens. Okay. Um, uh, it's a William Delaney because there's so many Irish gangs down there that it helps to be Irish. Also, is, uh, and there's so, some... So their authentication tests were pretty weak, obviously. Yeah. You just say your name. Oh, all right. Well, that's an Irish name. All right. <laughs> As you were, mate. Sorry about that. Um, uh, my name's Tom Peters. <laughs> Shit! Uh, there, there are some people who think he was Jewish, uh, but... Delaney's like, not Jewish. No. Uh, Eastman... Oh, so I mean, I'm saying his fake character is not Jewish. Sorry. Okay, fair. Um... But a lot of people said he wasn't like he was 
He's probably Protestant, uh, so whatever. I didn't go into the whole religious stuff, which a lot of people go into. Okay. Um, so uh, also another reason to be Irish, Tammany Hall, right? You're connected with the politicians if you're in a gang, if sure. you're Irish. Yeah, you can get that pigeon pill That's pill right. Passed, yeah. yeah. Uh, he also went by William Murray and sometimes Monk Eastman and other names, but Monk is what he's known as today. That's what people refer to him as. Okay. Even though he rarely used that name. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It all makes sense. Of course. There's nothing weird. Um, he was now known to police, but because he used different names, they always they, they thought he was William Delaney or somebody else. Like, they would catch him. He used a different name. There was, like, no way to... You didn't have ID Better back time. then. You'd just go, like, what, what's your name, kid? Frank uh, Frank O'Neill. That was the best. I remember in high school a couple of times I was at places where, like, parties would get busted and the co- before I had ID, and the cops would be like, what's your name? And it was just, like, the best. You're just <laughs> like, Jack Sullivan. <laughs> Later, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what all life was like. Yeah, it sounds great. Uh, once when he was arrested, he actually said his name was Edward Eastman, but a cop in the station jumped up and yelled, quote, I know him. His name's William Delaney. That's nah, Monk. That's who that is. <laughs> uh, so he was arrested uh, for many minor offenses like stealing pigeons. So you weren't allowed to steal pigeons? No, if it's someone else's pigeon, you can't steal it. It's not anyone else's pigeon. It's the no, th- that's pigeons. catching a pigeon, but we're talking about he would oh. actually steal other oh, people's he would pigeons. S- but why is he stealing? If they're so they're ubiquitous, in a cage. I can't. Just go up on the roof. They're all. Every building has a roof if full of pigeons. If you keep talking about <laughs> pigeon roofs. <laughs> uh, Monk got married in 1896 they're to Margaret. They're not supposed Margaret. to. A monk's? Yeah. No, he's not a real monk. Oh, right. Uh, he was 22. Uh, Monk's first serious arrest came in 1898. He was caught with burglary tools. He told the cops his name is William Murray, and that's the name he went uh, to jail under for three months. Okay, so so Edward doesn't Bill know. Bill Murray's record. just hanging out in jail. <laughs> uh, so Monk is small. He's five feet five inches tall and 150 pounds. Okay, uh, but that's normal for them. Right. Uh, according to police records, the average gang member was five foot three inches tall and weighed 120 to 135 pounds. So what's happened to us since then? Have we just like? Well, they weren't eating good back then, obviously. Right. Uh, and then, the, and then in times of like uh, of economic, you know, recession and stuff, they would eat even less. So right. uh, there was a malnutrition thing. It's but also, also that we've now just grown. We eat so much, and there's so many antibiotics too yeah, that we're I mean, probably just like yeah. We're all much bigger than they were. Right. I actually took a pic because Karen could get her super into Piggy Blinders, and I was when I was doing this research, uh-huh. I came across a picture, uh-huh. and I took a picture and I sent it to her, and she's like, "Look at how tall they are!" And they and then because it, it had it was the police, and they're all five three and five four. <laughs> it was, it's fucking crazy. You need scale. Um. So, uh, so Monk Small, he he had messy hair. He okay. he wore a um. He wore a derby. Okay. Uh, that was two sizes too small. So So he looked like some sort of like Yeah, so it was just like per- perched on the top of his like head. Like a carnival monkey? Like a carnival monkey. Um right, like a carnival monkey. So he's just got a little baby hat on? He got a baby hat on. Uh he had gold cap teeth and uh he liked to hang out in the gang's club without his shirt on. Or so, in torn up clothes. So this guy is <laughs> Okay, it's quite a look. Okay, there he is. Oh, geez, he's got a real mush face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, uh, that's uh, probably not yet, but he got into a lot of fights. Uh, so that's yeah, what happened to his sw- face. He looks swollen. His tie looks tiny, too. Um, from a description of Monk, quote, he began life with a bullet shaped head. Who's describing this? I think. <laughs> I think that means that, you know, sometimes when you come out of the old hoo hole when you're a baby, uh, the. Did you call it a hoo hole? Yeah, it's a, that's a, a legal term. Legal term? Yeah, it's the use in court. Uh, he came out of the old hoo hole, and uh, sometimes you get a little, uh, a little pointy action. Uh-huh. And then if you lay the kid down and don't turn him over, it stays pointy. So. That's why you see little kids with helmets. Oh, I just thought they were dirt bikers. <laughs> They're trying to reshape that head. So the uh, yeah, I, I know that part. Well, it's also that you know you can get that uh, that sort of 
you know, a back of the head like a coffee table if you're not careful. You got to rotate them. You got to rotate. Who's, who's watching these children where they're just like, oh, we forgot about him for four days. Know. Now he's a plank of wood. I don't know if they knew to rotate him back then. I mean, who knows? Hmm. Or, or his parents didn't care, you know? Yeah, it feels more like that. Um, so I began life with a bullet-shaped head, and during his turbulent career, acquired... Easier a, to get a bullet-shaped kid out of the hoo-hole. True. Just fires out. He acquired... Get a, the catcher's mitt. Here we go, Joyce. No, there's no catcher's mitt. Oh. Um, he acquired a broken nose and a pair of cauliflower ears. That's what I'm saying. He had heavily veined, sagging jowls, a short bull neck, plentiful, uh, plen plentifully scarred with battle marks, as were his cheeks. Okay. So, so you can see he's got a lot of yeah, scars. Yeah, yeah. He's him. he looks like a fighter. Yeah. Uh, and he was he was a badass fighter. Monk's fighting reputation landed him a job working as a sheriff in the Silver Dollar Saloon. Okay, so in a saloon, instead of a bouncer, you would have a sheriff of your bar? Well, uh... We've got a whole police force. Sheriffs in the 1890s were not the same thing as a sheriff now. Uh, it's, it is more of a bouncer. Okay. Uh, but with total leeway to do whatever they wanted. So, right. So I guess so, exactly okay. like a sheriff now. <laughs> totally. A sheriff. Our, yeah, a like, bar sheriff. Like our sheriffs in L.A. have actually gang tattoos. Right. They're in, in sheriff gangs. That's so cool that's to cool. hear. That's yep. cool. Yeah, it's really good. Good. Um... Uh, so this is where he became super well known. Uh, Monk would walk around with a four foot locust, which is a police stick made out of a kind of wood. Uh, okay. I believe locust wood is what okay. they called it. So which is harder than any other kind of wood. Right, and it's almost his size. Yeah, it's almost as big as him. Uh, he had a black jack in his pocket and brass knuckles on each hand. What is a black jack? Uh, that's the like leather. I think I'm pretty sure it's the leather thing that's like full of like lead or whatever sewn up okay. so you can just crack someone. I okay. might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, if it came to it, he also was very good using a beer bottle. So if he had to improvise, sure, beer bottle. Um, for each guy, he kicked the crap uh, who, out of Who's bad with using a beer bottle in a fight? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not that easy. I, can, I feel like I could pick it up real easy, literally. Uh, for each guy, he kicked the crap out of He would carve a notch in his uh, police stick. He would also beat up anyone who he heard had been cruel to animals. This guy, this is another one of these guys where I'm like doing You're the in. hokey pokey. I'm in on him out. Yeah, I don't like know what's him. going on. Like I like, I do like that. Yeah. For sure. Especially yeah. in this era. This is when people are like, cats are here for kicking. <laughs> what? Yeah. In Oh, in this era. I thought you were yeah. talking about today. No, good Lord. Not in this era. No. Monk moved up in the sheriff world and landed a job at New Irving Hall, which is a much bigger, much more popular place. Okay. A lot of dances held there uh, with a lot of like mm -hmm. lower belly criminal types. Mm. Mm. He quickly got a reputation as the most brutal sheriff around. He was even worse than Eat Em Up Jack McManus, who worked at Suicide Hall. What just happened? <laughs> what did you just say to me, sir? Bite your tongue. What is his name? Eat him up, Jack McManus. Eat him up, Jack McManus? Yeah. He would eat him up. Sounds like a Jack in the Box burger. He's, eat the fuck out of him. Okay. He worked at Suicide Hall. Sure. Known that way because so many women jumped off the building to kill themselves. What? Yeah. Uh, okay. Why? Bad parties? I, you, you can How did they get why. up there with all the pigeons on the roof? <sighs> yeah, you dummy. After about six months on the job, Monk had hurt so many people who needed to go to surgeons Ambulance drivers started referring to the accident ward at Bellevue Hospital as the Eastman Pavilion. Wait, because he sent so many people there? Yeah. Wow. Okay. On the night he hit uh, 49 victims notched in his nightstick, he just went up and cracked an innocent guy standing at the bar to well, make Dave, it an even 50. Dave, <laughs> you know how it is. You're so eager to get over that hump number. You don't want to wait. It it's annoying. Late. It might be late at night. You're like, this place is going to close could have down. Been three days since he'd gotten yeah. someone in the, in yeah. the hospital. You got to go to 50. Yeah. I Jeez. mean, he'd been wanting 50 for so long. Is there a bathroom here? Ah! Yeah. Deserved it. Monk became someone young men growing up in lower Manhattan looked up to. Sure. The first uh, who uh, became part of his crew were the assistants at the hall, and then others came. They imitated his speech and his mannerisms. Organically, a school of East Monk of Monk Eastman criminals and brawlers was born. A school? So they just all wanted to be like him. So he was showing them the ropes. Jesus. So he's like their god. They would fight anyone, anywhere, for anything. Monk resigned from his job and became a gang leader. 
So he went full time. He went full time. Right. Get yeah. benefits, all well, that. Let's get all into nine. this. Right. Okay. Right. So he's like, well, I got a bunch of kids who can do crimes. I, I like that his job as a sheriff was not, in his mind, close enough to being sort of like a gang person. Well, now he can now, but now he can make money, like real money. Because he'll be in, in He's the head of the gang, and right. he can send them out to do crimes. Okay. So he'd send them out to pickpocket and Send the steal. kids out? Yeah. Uh, okay, the, so this is a real Oliver situation we've got going on Yeah, here. yeah, he's fucking, he's building a business. I love it. I yeah, do like Oliver. He sent them out to pickpocket and steal all of the city. They also worked as lookouts, runners, and bodyguards. Soon he was asking for tributes from criminals operating on what became his turf. Tributes being money. Yeah. Right, okay. His territory now stretched from the Bowery to the East River. Okay. At this time, the older gang, some people may have heard of, were gone. The Dead Rabbits, the Pug Uglies, the Wyos. Oh, the Wyos, I have a picture of them. We've heard of the Pug Uglies before, right? Have yeah, the Pug Uglies have been in a lot of stuff. That's the Wyos. Oh, boy. Wyos. Yeah, they were badasses. They don't look very good. No, they look scary. Um, Anybody. I mean, a lot of these people just look scary in general. So these three gangs had merged and turned into the five points gang i love merging yeah guys we came to an agreement we've reached it it. um so there were also around 50 smaller gangs in the area who owed allegiance to larger gangs okay so the big gangs were the gophers the gas houses the hudson dusters and now the eastmans sure if a gang war broke out the smaller gangs would fight under the banner of a larger gang Okay. So you have so just kind of like auxiliary gangs. Like you have a smaller gang that works under you. Sure. And if you need reinforcements, you call in the smaller gangs. Right. But, and then they, but other than that, they're independent. Right. But they will, they're sort of independent contractors. So then yeah. they will join your gang during times of need. Yes. Okay. Sure. Makes total sense. Yeah. Uh, in the 1900 census, Monk's job was listed as, quote, salesman, birds. What? <laughs> what? He, this is Jesus. Well, was the, set, the, the census was just like, you know, uh, select one of the jobs we offered. You got to fill out uh, the census and so you can't put uh, handler slash pigeons. Yeah. Pigeon guy. Yeah. Uh, doctor slash beater. Well, he had opened a new pet store on Broom Street, though in reality, he refused to sell any of the animals and he had 500 animals and birds in the shop. Not a lot of pet store owners recognize the cruelty of the business enough to be like, they're never leaving. <laughs> that's a great attitude. Plus, pack in as many as possible. But I mean, like, it, that's like why I can't, like, if I go to, like, a shelter or I don't go to a pet store, but when I used to, like, I would, you know, you're just like, I want to take everything with me. Yeah. This is if I were to own a pet shop. That's you'd right. You'd just be like, they can't leave. They're my <laughs> friends. And by the way, I don't have a home anymore. I live in my pet store. <laughs> this is fun. Um... So, but the pet store is a front. That's why he's not selling anything because it's just a way to, you know, bring money through. Okay. Um, the pet shop uh, was kind of his headquarters. He hung out there. Hey, this snake is full of money. <laughs> the hell is this? Hey, these guinea pigs are just full of heroin. They ain't even real. Oh, boy. Across the street was a public school. One day, Monk decided to start s- shooting out the windows of the school. Sorry, so I'm going to need a little uh-huh. more context if possible. Why is that? Just because his move is dramatic. Okay. Well, he was just bored. He's bored in his pet store. Yeah. and So, so he just decides he'll start just shoot shooting it. across the street at the windows of the school. I bet you 20 years ago that sounded a lot crazier. <laughs> it still sounds crazy. Yeah. But now it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he we went there. Yeah. Um, the headmistress reported, quote, bullets rained through the schoolrooms and the children were in a panic. What, um, what grounds? I don't know. Okay. Uh, so the headmistress runs out and starts yelling at Monk. And nice. he's impressed. Yeah, I and was just going to say. He responds, quote, you're all right. You're a good sport for not calling the cops. And he did as I asked him. So he, she yelled at him and he was like, stop. yeah, you're all good. All right. Look at you with your yelling. Thank and then you. Stop shooting. Sorry. Yeah. You're right. So he's a nice guy. Yeah, a super nice guy. Yeah. For sure. The, what I would say he is. Sure. The Eastmans kept expanding, causing more and more friction with other gangs on their borders. Monk was also a very good diplomat and built alliances with rivals. And as he expanded, he delegated crimes to his lieutenants, though he still liked to, quote, beat up a guy once in a while. I keeps my hand in. 
Yeah, no, for sure. You don't want to get bored. Well, it's tough. I mean, it's all paperwork at that level. Well, like, are you not? I love what, yeah, what are you supposed to do? Just like sit around and delegate and do paperwork? Just hear the or, stories about these guys flogging strangers? Yeah, could you imagine not beating a guy up? Oh, don't even. Yeah. He might have also been sitting at like 99, too. So That's he was right. like, I gotta get it. I got gotta the go, itch. Gotta go. Some of the names of the smaller gangs. Here we go. Now this is a fun part. Under the Eastmans were the McCarthy's, the Batavia Street Gang, the Lolly Myers. There we go. The Red Onions. There, here we go. And the squab wheelman. What happened? <laughs> what it did? Did the names even make sense in that era to people, or were people like, "What the hell's a squab? What is it?" Squab wheelman. What the hell's a squab wheelman? Okay, so the squab wheelman were run by Crazy Butch. What is happening? <laughs> Monk had now ventured into another business: bike rentals. Interesting, but he wouldn't part with any of the bikes. No, he did these. Uh, were, yeah. To stay in the good graces of Monk, the smaller gang members had to rent at least one bike a week. Sure. Whether they could ride it or not. Right. So that's, in other words, what we would call a bribe. Yeah. Right. Uh, the squab wheelmen were actually named in homage to Monk. Squabs were pigeons and wheelmen were bikes. Okay. <laughs> so they formed a gang named... For him. It's quite an homage. That's pretty fucking sweet. That's cool. Yeah. Squab Wheelman. Uh, Crazy Butch showed why he was nicknamed Crazy one night when he attacked the Squab Wheelman's own pool room. Sure. So he's he's the head of the Squab Wheelman. Uh, uh, Crazy Butch. Yes. And he goes to the Squab Wheelman pool hall. And he attacks hall, the Squab Wheelman and pool he, hall. And he attacks them. Quote, by way of testing their valor and settling definitively in event of trouble, who would stick and who would duck? Sure. So he is crazy. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Butch and over six others burst into the pool room shooting. There were 60 wheelmen inside. Almost all fled. One guy jumped out a window and broke his neck. That guy. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Tough. Yeah. yeah. It was a test, you fucking asshole. I know. I was kidding and playing along. Can't move anything. Oh, no. My extremities. Uh, but I got you. <laughs> I'm fine. I stayed in here. I know, but I, I also pranked you guys. Yeah, that's not a prank. That window was not real glass. And the ground is... Oh Hard. my God! Yeah, I'm. I need an ambulance. Yeah, we're we're not getting you. April one. Fool. Oh. By the way, you're not in the gang anymore. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Have you heard of the Squab Flatman? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna head to this light. How? In my mind's eye. <laughs> Uh, but Butch soon uh, was sent away for burglary. He got a four year sentence. So that he's in trouble for. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Monk always kept his true identity hidden and he constantly moves. He was never really telling anyone. He, everyone thought he was a bunch of different names. Right. Um, he started switching headquarters around from saloons and pool rooms and even once to a graveyard. He's trying to keep the cops from knowing. So he's like Saddam Husseining, uh, essentially. Yes. Right. He's in caves and. Right. Eating um, wet Doritos in a hole. Wet? Uh huh. How do you eat a wet Dorito? That's what Saddam Hussein used to do. That, that's the craziest thing I Wait, ever are heard you about. Serious? Him. Yeah. That was one of the craziest. Would he like dip him in water? No, he would like take, he would have a bag of Doritos and he would pour some water in the back. What in the fuck does that even mean? Look, I mean, I understand or criminal, you know, say what you will. Uh, I, to me, that's where I go. This man is not of this world. <laughs> okay. Uh, have you ever tried it? Just because you it, <laughs> no, because if you do, if you did, would you be like you oh, become a, a dictator? Oh, You're like yeah, I'm better than all the other citizens. Yeah. they're just eating plain Doritos. They're not putting water in their bags. Yeah, all right. Uh, it, they would just get soggy, and you couldn't pick them up. Hey, dude, I'm not the guy who's saying this is a. I good mean, did thing he shake do. it up and then drink it like uh, a milkshake? No, no, that's also what that helps you get there. No, this both are crazy. But what I have read is that he would just, he had a bag of Doritos. Like, this is when the U.S. had captured him. Oh. But, yeah. This is after, yeah. It wasn't like he was just in the palace, like, eh, well, no, they, uh, they what killed Doritos him. forever. They didn't catch him. They killed him. We killed him. Yes, but there was, they had him on, they put him on oh, they trial. Had him on, uh, so this is when he is, this is during his trial when he's, like, jailed. No, he was, Bin Laden was never jailed. No, 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 Saddam Hussein. Oh, Saddam Hussein. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. 
No. Never talking about Bin Laden. No, no, no. Um, uh, wait, how long was he in prison for? So who's? I mean, you know, Saddam? not 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 too long. And they were giving him Doritos. They, yeah, they were like bribing him with Doritos or something. You know, they're like, Saddam, look, play ball, baby. Hey, hey, what, you want another bag of Dorito water cereal? Here you go, baby. Yeah. What fucking world is this? It's It was a different time. I mean, this, this is... The world you're describing is worse than the, wor- the world in this story. And the world we live in now is worse than both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So this guy, he's switching locations. He's sleeping in graveyards. Uh, the gang started working for Tammany Hall, stealing ballot boxes, voting over and over, and working as, quote, sluggers. Sure. Meaning people who just beat people who didn't do what they wanted? Guys who uh, would come to vote and they were going to vote for the wrong guy. They would uh, slug, it's a problem. slug that guy. Right. So yeah. until that guy's brain got Doesn't, in the position it was supposed to. That's right. And he saw the light and voted for and, who he should vote. Or went home. Right. Yeah. Either way, for a bag of wet Doritos. Um, and all, doing all this just gave the, gave the gang more immunity from the law. Uh, the five pointers are doing the exact same thing. Okay. Monk's greatest enemy was the five point leader, Paul Kelly. Paul was Italian, but took the name Paul Kelly for the same reason Monk took Delaney. So that's his counterpart. His real name was Apollo Antonini of Vissarelli. That's Italian? No, that's Swedish. Oh, okay. Kelly went from being a professional boxer to a gangster and soon ran the Five Points gang. Paul was good looking with great hair and dressed impeccably. He spoke four languages, total opposite of Monk. Okay. Oh, we um, get a look at this guy? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's good. Oh, yeah. You like that shit? Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's, now, that's, that's a nice looking man. Yeah. Um, the two actually liked each other personally. Paul said of Monk, quote, he's a soft, easygoing fella, but has a gang of cowards behind him, second story men, flat robbers, and mall buzzers. Yeah. Bunch of mall buzzers. Right? Mall, yeah. mall buzzer. Yeah. Could have looked that up, I guess. Well, I'm sure it has an insane. Well, you know, what a, you know what a mall is, M-O-L-L, mall. Oh, mall? And what is that? It's a. Hmm? Huh? What? Hmm. Feels like. Sure. So. Mall. A mall. An M O L L? Mole. Mole? Mole buzzers mole. are different. Mole. Sure. Mole. Old buzzer. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to go. At midnight on April 13th, 1901, two five point gang members, Peggy and James Donovan. Peggy's a guy. Sure. Uh, the brothers, obviously. Sure. They came into the Silver Dollar Saloon where Monk was drinking. Uh, Peggy shot at Monk. He missed hitting 18-year-old Sam, Samuel Franklin, but he hit him in his pocket watch. Which, that really happens? Yeah. Uh, you know there's backstory in that. In that, that, that guy's movie, my grandpa gave me this. He said, keep it. I didn't want to, but two weeks ago, I decided I was going to start keeping it. And now it saved my life. <laughs> uh, he, he was slightly wounded, but not totally wounded. Well, he had uh, no idea what fucking time it was from then on. Nobody knows what time it is. Mall oh. is saying for prostitute. Oh, interesting. So Mall's a sex worker. A mall buzzer. Mall buzzer. So then what the hell's a buzzer? Maybe it's uh they have sex with them or maybe sex they're just worker. maybe the, maybe it's like a pimp he's talking about. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um there's the five points guys. Did they have hats? Uh <laughs> some, Oh wow, yeah, that guy does not. There's one guy one without guy does a, not hat. Have a hat. It feels like and he it, fucking showed up for the picture. Oh, dude. What, an, what asshole. an asshole on hat day and his ties all what short. Fucking t- every day was hat day. That's true. Um, so Monk, after the shooting happens, Monk runs out into the street and the Donovans chase him and they catch him. And then Peggy pressed his gun against Monk's stomach and shot twice. Jesus. Monk then collapsed onto the sidewalk and James shot him behind the ear. Holy shit. Police arrived. Uh, James shot twice at one of the cops before other cops tackled him, and Peggy got away. Monk, somehow still alive, dazed and very wounded, started to walk. Well, that's not a good time to walk. No, he's going for a little walk. I'm going to go. It's time for a stroll. I'm going to go buy a couple Ugh. of... Uh, I gotta go get vegetables for a soup I'm making. I wish there were those lift scooters. I don't know if he's really walking either. He's like, you know, he's walking like he's in the thriller it's video. A, it's a stagger situation. Sure. Yeah, I gotta go. 
He heads to the uh, Governor Governor Hospital, uh, about a mile away. Okay. So he, so he a walks mile. a mile to the hospital. Yeah. He plugs the holes Jesus. with his fingers. What? While he's he, he sticks his fingers. Himself? Yeah, he's damning he's himself. He's belly fingering himself. The girl, the boy who put the finger in the dike. He's yeah. doing that, but with his tummy. Ah. Uh, because there's holes there now that shouldn't be there. He's giving himself a Jack Horner belly. That's right. He's bowling balling himself. Yeah, he is absolutely bowling balling himself. They performed surgery on him and removed the bullets. He was not. What about the fingers? The fingers they could not get out. Okay. (laughs) He's not expected to survive, so he gave a statement and named his attackers. Okay. Two days later, the New York Times reported that Edward Eastman, who lived at 101 First Street, had died. Okay. It's a good address. Yeah, sure. Um, But he wasn't actually dead. No. He was in critical condition where he was for weeks, and he survived. When he realized he was actually going to live, he recanted his deathbed statement and said he would not testify against whoever shot him. Hmm. Street coat. Yeah. He's not a squealer. Sure. In life. Yeah. In death, he squeals. In death, he squeals. (laughs) Yeah, everyone else did it. That's right. They hurt me. Uh, So a week after he got out of the hospital, a woman lured a five-pointer out of a bar where he was shot and killed. Police said Monk had gotten his man. Okay. The Five Pointers and the Eastmans battled for territory. They had street fights. It was described as a, quote, vicious fight for supremacy, the greatest and most bloody of a generation and the three lowest wards of the city. Several gang members were killed. The disputed territory between the Bowery uh, was between the Bowery and a dive bar on Pell Street, uh, mostly full of Chinese immigrants and opium dens. That's the area they're fighting for. Yeah. Okay. So Kelly Monk would send patrols into the territory with the instructions to beat up or shoot anyone from the other gang. Okay. Uh, so there were a lot of small battles, which turned into one huge one in September 1902. So a five-pointer was robbed and beaten one night, and then the next night an Eastman gang member was beaten so badly he died. And That's called murdered. Um, I, from what I've read. Uh, Are you doing the Lion King intro? <laughs> Uh, when, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Just so, looking to see if we have any other. Nope. And this is all in uh, territory you said that's predominantly like the Chinese section? Yeah. So they're happy about this influx too. They're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And they're immigrants. There's no really Chinese gangs yet. And right. so it's just like mostly opium dens for the, the, the white guys to right. come down and smoke. Okay. Right. Um, that's what the area looks like. But man, I would be so into the opium dens. I know. Good lord. No. You'd have to peel me off of those that's chairs. That's right. Um so uh sixty Eastmans the next night go into Chinatown. Split into two groups looking for five pointers. They had pistols, knives, sh- and slung shots. Slung shots. I think it's like a really big slingshot. I think you can like fucking ta- throw bricks with it and you shit. You could just fire another guy at him. <laughs> Put me in the slung shot. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Uh, one group uh, met a group of five pointers at White and Walker Streets, and they shot and threw bricks at each other. Okay. They kept fighting and rioting all the way up to Broadway. There, they were met by the police, who started fighting both gangs, and they stopped the riot. But the fighting started again at White and Center Streets. The cops rushed down and put an end to it. They confiscated thirteen guns, six knives, and three blackjacks. So police started patrolling the uh, area in groups of five. Quote, pouncing on the knots of fighters at every opportunity and sending them to prisons in groups. And that finally stopped. it. Okay. Briefly. Five <laughs> days later, <laughs> okay. the fighting flared up again and 35 five-pointers attacked a pool room that was an Eastman hangout. Monk was there. Okay. The fighting went on for 10 minutes. Three gang members were pushed out of the second floor windows. One was an Eastman gang member who died from a fractured skull. That will kill you. That Yeah, hitting yeah, your skull and cracking right. it open. By the way, 10 minutes in fighting. That's fucking crazy. Four hours yeah, of it's real ex- life. Exhausting. Yeah. You've seen Roadhouse, the movie Roadhouse. I've lived Roadhouse, the yeah. movie Jack. So it's like that. Yeah. Come at me with it. I've seen Roadhouse. The cops arrived and arrested 29 people. Uh, they found dozens of guns. So once the cops would run in, everyone would just throw their gun on the ground. Hey, look, we found another one. Hey, there's a gun. Fl- you know how some places have sawdust on the floor? This isn't a pool cue officer. Peanut shells. Well, the the uh, 
the dead rabbits used to play pool with guns to intimidate people. Well, that's a game where you really have to be aware of where the guy is <laughs> shooting the ball because you're like, oh, well, you know, I don't actually go behind you. Um, Monk and the others were arraigned the next day. The prosecutor described them as, quote, a disgrace to the city. What does he know? But Monk's attorney was an ex-assemblyman who said they were all just, quote, innocent boys arrested without cause. Gentlemen, <laughs> they're, they're like in their 20s. Yeah. They're just a bunch of young, misguided kids. A bunch kids. of kids. What's look at them, huh? Look at Monk's mush, mashed potato oh, head. A little monkey over here. Hey, I'm sorry, sir. I just uh, I don't I know just, no better. I just want to see my mom. <laughs> Um, now, during this time, the Eastmans were also fighting with the Yaki Yakes. Sure. I was going to ask where the Yaki Yakes were in all this. <laughs> the Yaki Yakes. They were a gang who uh, fought under the independent gang fighting under the five points. Okay. They were also a much smaller gang. They were led by Big Dave Bernstein. Sure. Uh, they fought nightly battles. One night, Big Dave was shot a few minutes after he had gone to talk to Monk. At the hospital, he wouldn't name anyone. Quote, anyway, I'll settle my own scores. The doctors there were like, good. Okay. This yeah, is, just please. We'll see you just, in two weeks. Yes. Can you also take your fingers out of your heart? I cannot. Get them out. That's how we do it in the city. They have songs. Of course. The Eastman's then shot into Big Dave's saloon from the outside. Two Yankee Yakes were seriously wounded. 19-year-old Kid Twist... An East. Twi- I love his Kid- first. His solo stuff is great. Kid Twist was. Um, Whoa. Kid Twist was a lieutenant uh, in uh, Eastman's gang. Okay. He was arrested, and he said he acted in self-defense. Sure. Um, and no witnesses would come forward to counter his story, so he was released. Jeez, that's a great. Uh, yeah. I mean, that is a good code if you are these guys. Yeah. It's no like, witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. All is fine. Uh, then an Eastman named Patty the Snake was beaten by a group led by Bill Argument McCantnan. You just knew Sorry. you were sitting on gold. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you? You saw those. I couldn't get through it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. couldn't get through it. Wait, give me what, the Patty Snake? Patty Which the is s- a fun game to play on the school ground. Oh, I love it. Patty Snake, Patty Snake. Uh, Patty the Snake was beaten by a group led by Bill Argument McMahon. Argument. <laughs> It's terrible. Hey, how'd you get that name? How'd you get that name? All right, Bill. Settle down. You just s- asking you a question. You asking me if I'm settling down? I'm not settling Here's down. Here's your beer, Bill. I didn't ask for a fucking beer. Who told you I wanted a fucking beer? You did two minutes ago. You ordered it at oh, the bar. Oh, you did two minutes ago. I wanted it at the bar. What's your problem? What are you, are you saying? I have a problem. I don't have a problem. Hey, Bill, I don't know why you're angry at this guy. He just brought you a beer. How am I angry down? at anybody right now? I'm not angry at anybody. You're pushing back on everything. You're Who's being a pushing? Real... You're pushing. You are. You're, you're being the a real contrarian. Guy. Hey, what the boys. Hell is contrarian Hi, mean? Bill. We still on for tonight? Yeah. Interesting twist. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think you'd go there. Okay. We found the Achilles. <laughs> Um, so at the hospital, Patty, the snake told the cops, quote, I ain't no squealer. I will attend to the matter myself. You know who would always tattle was Petey, the squealer, Peter, the squealer. I'll was tell the you everything worst. you want to know. There was a what bunch of them. Here the names. This is the contact information. What do you fans want to hear? Oh well, boy, I'll sing till the day's over. Fellas, I think we got to get rid of Petey, the squealer. Hey, what's the problem? I'm sitting right here, guys. There's no problem. Well, I ain't telling all, nothing. First of all, your name is really bad. Yeah, but I only got it on account of the way I act. You're a squealer. Well, uh, yeah, but you're the one who stabbed that guy two weeks ago. Okay, that's a good example of what you shouldn't be doing in the gang. Oh, okay. Now that I know, I'll be better. Did you guys hear? What are you doing? Oh. What are you whispering? Nothing. I just was nothing. Let's have a meeting. Who wants popcorn? It just was invented, maybe. Huh? Okay, see you guys later. Well, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. All right. This is a good meeting, though, huh? Hey, everybody write down your contact information. Hey, Jimmy the Stabber, you want to take care of this? Hey, yeah, no problem, boss. <laughs> yow, yow. You did it. You did it. <laughs> you did it. I hear this man stab me. Um, so when uh, Patty got out of the hospital two days later, he... Uh, he went to wait at Bill the Argument's place. 
Sure. And when Bill argument showed up, Patty, quote, pressed a revolver to the base of his skull and blew off the top of his head. Jesus Christ. Who's arguing now? Well, Bill's nope, done. Nobody. Uh, yeah, Bill's done. Argument. Uh, police started n- now making raids to stop the Yankee uh, Yakes and the Eastmans from fighting. Now, some of the pool rooms were set up like labyrinths. So when cops broke through the armored doors of one, they found themselves in a room with three doors. What? They were uh, welcome, police officers. <laughs> it's time to choose. So they broke through the first door. And they found themselves in a room with three doors. Oh, man. Whoa. Am I the only one who's tripping out here a little bit? Did we take mushrooms? Hey, we did take mushrooms, okay? But we'll be fine. Some tells me if we just take another tour, we'll be okay. They backed up and tried the second door and found a room with three doors. Dude, now... Hey, Billy, I'm going crazy what here. What is going on? What the fuck is this? Three do- Okay. They went back and tried the third door and found a room with three doors. Finally, a cop realized they were over the pool room and he smashed with an axe through the floor and they jumped down. Oh, man. Okay. They make your own door. A floor door. You got to uh, improvise. Um, So eventually the fighting led the Tammany politicians to crack down. They were worried that an all-out war would break out and, and upset the voters who were pretty indifferent to gangsters killing each other at this point. Cool. So they're like, oh, it's gangsters killing gangsters. But then if it... It's all at war, then other people start getting hurt. Okay. So, um, politician Tom Foley had to sit down with the gangs. Now, Tom Foley. So you got to be a little nervous for that intervention. He's the guy over on the right. The guy who looks like he's wearing a weird bird hat? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so... Boy, those are that. Yeah, that's a real that that picture is. Those are all pretty Tam- Tammany Hall guys. Look at them. Yeah, bunch of pricks. Yeah. Uh, so he has to sit down. He said while he understood there would be beatings and murders every now and then as part of his business. Hey, you make an omelet. Sometimes you got to kill a guy, right? We understand, gentlemen. Yes. Um, open warfare would cause everyone trouble, and if the fighting didn't stop, Tammany Hall would stop protecting the gangs. <clears throat> so Monk and Kelly agreed to end the war. Okay. Tom Foley then went out because the reporters are waiting outside because they know the meeting's happening. Sure. And he goes out and he says, quote, the representatives of these rival factions have been given their words. Oh, let's start again. The representative of these rival factions have given their words that they will never more be bad. That's not what they said, right? What an era (laughs) where you are having... (laughs) A politician come out to talk about how the negotiations between gang factions has gone. Um, uh, and now I'll, with that, I'll take your questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> what? I don't know. I said a thing. Okay. It sounded great when it came out of my mouth. Sure. Yeah. So can you just write it down and we'll be good? That's not how this operates. Okay. It will be in the future. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the representatives of these rival factions haven't given their words that they will never more be bad, thus ending the necessity of calling out the police reserves to quell riots and disperse gangs with armed pistols, clubs, and other weapons. After the deal was signed, uh, they went to New Dorp, Staten Island, uh, to seal the deal with a chowder. Okay, so just one of those regular sort of <laughs> culminating chowder moments. Just all uh, right, boys. And uh, to make it official, let's all have big bowls of chowder. Does anyone got any boys? Chowder? It's time for a bowl of clams in liquid. Uh, we are about to make it official once we go to the clam signing. Uh, Kelly Monk and a bunch of their followers drank and ate, and then headed back on the ferry at midnight. Everyone eat their oath chowder as they. <laughs> Uh, got to Manhattan, they marched through the streets in South Ferry with a brass band fully had paid for leading them. Sure. Then hundreds of five-pointers started shooting their revolvers into the air. Here we go. So this is the day of the announcement? Well, they shouldn't have gotten them drunk. The day of the proclamation yes. after this the... Is the ch- peace. After the, this is celebrating the peace announcement. After the Chowder Summit, they, just, chowder. they have walked the streets That's right. we with are, a brass band hired by one of the Tammany Hall correct. guys... And now uh, shooting into the sky, shooting into the sky. And here we are again. 
Um, as they got to their territory, 15 cops tried to restore order. They were badly beaten by the mob. This is, again, the day yes, of the announcement. The, yes, this okay. is the end of the day of the... Sure. Uh, so Monk set up a prototype the mafia would use for generations in New York. He, protection rackets. He wasn't just a legit businessman. Um, it wasn't, sorry, it wasn't just legit businessmen that he, he did the protection with. Uh, he forced thieves, brothel owners, gambling house owners, gamblers, all to pay up. And the cut, and Tammany Hall got a cut of everything. So this is the, right, the mob, the mob model being that you, or the mobble, as I like to call it. Yeah. That you are like, hey, give us money and you get to You won't stay. get hurt you by get us. To live your life. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, so... Uh, now the Tammany Hall guys are happy. They got money coming in. Sure. These guys will help them win votes. Right. Um, by 1900, Monk's gang had 1,200 men in it. That's a, that's a hefty number for a that's gang. That's a big Especially bunch of in dudes. this era. 1,200. 1,200. They wore expensive clothes, drank top shelf booze, and had money to burn. Monk's gang united different types of gangs to further their collective interest. Other smaller gangs paid him tribute and could be called upon for battle. He had his lieutenants write up reports of the crimes they'd carried out. Okay. It's a little very backwards. O- very organized. <laughs> he is considered the first gangster to take advantage of labor disputes. He took money to stop union organizers and beat up two leaders after he would often take the money from both sides. Right. Sometimes okay. he would send in gang members to literally work both sides of a strike. His have gang you, members. His he, he would have guys cracking heads of union guys and also guys in the union fighting back. Right. Okay. Um what what, what is that? What's the upside? He's, he's in that? getting money. Okay. From both sides. Okay, gotcha. Right. Um But aren't you like, "Hey, I think we're getting screwed." <laughs> like once he starts beating your side? Yeah, it's not great. Right. Okay. It's a bad yeah, I mean it's a one-time payment model. Yeah, it's it really not. Is. Yeah, it's, it's not, not recurring. That's right. Right. <laughs> Monk would pay off uh, the cops, uh, but one occasion he did not, and the cops raided his headquarters. They took out two wagon loads of brass which knuckles, is a, um, which is a is that a metric weighing system? Yeah, wagon right. loads is a metric weighing system. Sure. They took out wagon loads. Sounds like a gang member, by the way. Uh, well, I'm sure it was. Hey, I'm wagon loads. Hey, how are you? Could hey, you carry good. this? Uh, I could, but I don't have my gear. Uh, two wagon loads of brass knuckles, slung shots, blackjacks, knives, pistols, and other weapons. Okay. So two wagon loads of weapons. Sure. As Monk's power grew, he moved the business, his business out of the Lower East Side, and he started collecting debts, doing personal vendettas, scaring off businesses, and silencing witnesses uptown. So it's quite a portfolio. Yeah, he's killing it. Yeah, it's versatile. One of his lieutenant's prices, a slash on the cheek with a knife, a dollar to $10. Hmm, interesting. Shot in the leg, $1 to $25. Interesting. So both could be purchased for a dollar, potentially. Yeah. If it was the right situation. Uh, well, uh, shot in the arm, 5 to 25 Okay, so now we're getting up. Throwing a bomb, 5 to 50 So still possible for $5 to get someone to throw a bomb. Murder, $10 to $100. So for double the bomb-throwing price, you could potentially get a murder out of him. That's right. So... The reason the prices are different is, and if you're on the Lower East Side, you don't have a lot of money, but if you're on, if you're uptown, you have the cash to pay. That's quite a sliding scale. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Monk had the courts paid off. One cop quote: Monk Eastman was arrested thirty times, but we never got him dead to rights and had to let him go. Uh, his animal love continued as he grew more powerful. Powerful, he collected more pigeons and cats. He now had five hundred pigeons and a hundred cats. It's a fucked up pet store if you think about it. I mean, I don't, at this fucked, point, it's not a pet store uh, anymore. It is a fucked up pet store. <laughs> I mean, essentially, his pet store has rival gangs inside of it. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Hey, with the pigeons. Hey, with the cats. Yeah. I mean, the cats are winning. The pigeons aren't doing shit. Yeah, I guess. It's a, but It's not pigeons, great for the pigeons. It's not great for the pigeons, no. but they have numbers. They do have numbers, but... They have flight. Okay. Yeah, I agree. My money's on the cats. Yeah. Uh, now, as much as there had been a truce with the five points, there were still uh, fights happening here and there, most between individual gang members. But on September 15th, 1903, fighting flared up big time between the two gangs. Forty Eastmen started a fight with eight men in a bar. Then they headed for the Bowery and started more fights. Some five-pointers decided to raid an Eastman hangout. The hangout was a, quote, 50-foot crevice between two rows of tenements. It's a great 
spot to hang out. It's a great name for a joint, too. A crevice. You want to go down a crevice tonight? I thought we were calling it the ditch. Well, it's really more of a crevice. Hey, you guys, I found a great spot for a hangout. It's hey. a big ditch. Hey, guys, we going to the gourd? <laughs> so, so this is the hangout. Um, uh, both sides pulled out guns and started shooting at each other. A five-pointer was killed. More and more gang members joined the shootout. The police arrived, and both sides shot at them. The streetlights were shot out so the cops couldn't see. By midnight, over 100 gang members were shooting at each other. Jesus. So at this point, is Foley like, um, Hey, gentlemen? guys, not the plan. Remember this summit? Chowder. Hey, guys, chowder. We need, all right, listen, I understand what's happening. We need to get more chowder down there we, right now. Guys, we, we did it over chowder. And we ate it out of bread bowls. Yeah, I mean, that's a deal. All right. Here you go, guys. Here's some chowder. I know this will fix everything. The gophers came I've been shot eight times. The gophers came of from course. Hell's Kitchen. Sure. And started shooting at both gangs. Interesting. One of the gophers would later say, quote, a lot of the guys was popping at each other, so why shouldn't we do a little popping ourselves? Hey, it's pretty much the gopher mentality if you think about it. Sort of just like, well, it's there, why not fuck it up? Uh, finally the police were able to gather a large enough group to head in. And as they did, gang members threw bricks at them from rooftops. The battle then moved and raged along two miles of streets. Wow. The path of destruction and number of casualties was huge. But by the so the people are just getting shot left and right. Right. And not gang members, like right, just, just people. Okay. And they dis and then finally they just disappeared into the night and went their own ways. Okay. Um, the dead and wounded were laying in the streets, in some cases for hours. A five-pointer died at the hospital from, quote, a gunshot wound and strangulation. <laughs> well, interesting. Well, you got to cover, hedge your bets. Cover your bases, right? But I'm dying from a gunshot. Shit, uh, die from this, too. Wounded gang members were locked up. Monk was one of them under the name Joe Morris. Hey, I'm Joey Morris. He said he was, he was just a passerby. I just, uh, I was I, uh, walking by. I just, uh, I was singing. I had a gun time, uh, that I found. I picked it up. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure I've been hit in the face a lot, but... Uh, oh, is that him? Side view. Wow. Um, he's, got a really he's got a face like a frying pan. It's real flat. Yeah, it's not great. Um, the police would not, could not find one witness. So two miles of shooting, people getting shot. <laughs> yeah. Getting well, killed, but, but, and no one is coming Yes, forward. but if you've watched two miles of yeah. just a war... Yeah. And you, you're like, nah, I'm good. Nah, <laughs> nah, I'm good. I feel like me talking about it results in more street murder, so I'm good. Uh, and then the Tammany Hall lawyers came to help. Everyone was let go. But the battle was so crazy, even Tammany Hall had to deal with it. They threatened to take away both gangs' protection. protection. Once again, Tommy and Monk had a face-to-face -face meeting. Peace was declared again. What kind of uh, soup do we want to uh, dot the T's with? After... Tom Foley organized a ball, and there, Monk and Kelly shook hands in the middle of the dance floor. Wow. Very yeah. high school rom-com. That's right. Right. Okay. But the police commissioner was finished. He met with the city inspector and assistant DA to see what they could do, and they started making raids. He charged six corrupt cops with neglect of duty. Interesting. That's how you know someone's serious. Yeah. Uh, the night after the battle, the five pointers were holding a fundraiser for the wounded gangsters, uh, bills. They, a a you know, gang is holding a fundraiser. Yeah. Isn't your ability to raise they, funds pretty much just to go rob? Well, maybe the community should give back for all the help they received. Fair point. Um, they wore black badges with silver printed letters that said, quote, we mourn our loss. Interesting. It's Interesting. nice. Yeah. It's sort of sweet. Um, cops came to the fundraiser and started beating heads. Hmm. The inspector jumped on a table and yelled, quote, the Paul Kelly Association is dead from now on. The Paul Kelly. Oh, OK. Right. Yeah. OK. After the raid, the inspector told the press, quote, I think we have succeeded in putting the Paul Kelly Association out of business. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. What we want to do is Neville Chamberlain the moment. That's right. Right. As soon as you feel like it's over. Mission accomplished. Yep, done, done, done. Put up the banner. The next day, Paul Kelly held a funeral for one of the dead five pointers and 2,000 
five pointers marched to Brooklyn. Wow. Obviously, he wasn't out of business. The cops hit the Eastman's necks. They staked out their hangout. The cops wore disguises so they wouldn't be recognized in their uniforms. Right. They had uh, uh, scarves. Oh, they had scarves. And slouch hats. I don't know. And dressed as trolley conductors, motormen, butchers, printers, and street cleaners. Some wore fake mustaches and fake beards. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. That, that, that era. I mean, the fake beard in this era must be a nightmare. <laughs> it probably was just like a horse tail. You're like, how are you? I'm growing it out. <laughs> yes. Uh, whoop. I always forgot about the old mustache before I have a sip of this ale. Uh, then they charged in and started beating the Eastman and made arrests. Anonymous cop told a reporter the gangs were, quote, uh, going to get a dose of their own medicine. They are going to be beaten within an inch of their lives by the police whenever the slightest excuse is offered. Sorry, and you're the good guys? I'm the cop. Right, okay, just wanted Cops. to... Sure. Cool. Congrats. Yes. Uh, but all the gang members were released by the courts because the courts were all bought off. Right. Things started to calm down a bit because an election was coming and Tammany Hall needed calm. Though Kelly and an Eastman lieutenant challenged each other to a boxing match in the cellar below a bar. I like this. Yeah. Uh, Kelly was uh, outweighed by 80 pounds. Okay. And he beat the living shit out of the guy. Okay. Now, this was uh, incredibly offensive and upsetting to the Eastmans, and they now wanted revenge. But it was a fair fight. He's still mad that their sure. guy got beaten up. Right. Um, after the election was over, the fighting started again. And Eastman was beaten, had his nose broken, and, and an ear bit off. Oh, Jesus. You got to take an ear, man. Uh, you got to do everything you can. You got to get in there. You got to fight. You got to stab. Um, like, if I well, lose an ear in a fight, that's where I'm retiring from fighting. There's the cops. Oh, look at them. Oh, boy. Um... Monk told Kelly to exact rep- retribution on his own man, or he would. Okay. Tammany Hall held peace talks again. This time, they agreed to settle their differences in the ring. Okay. Paul Kelly and Monk Eastman would have a bare knuckle fight. The winner would get the disputed territory. Holy shit! We what? Come on, Israel yeah. Palestine, let's dance. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Uh, they held the fight one night in the Bronx. Everyone took the train up and walked two miles to the site. The ref was from a rival gang who had no affiliation with either gang. I love that it's like, yes, while he is a gang member, he doesn't care for either one of our gangs. That's right. He's Nobody neutral. Cares. I'm from the Sad Rabbits. Uh, okay, yeah, he could call it. <laughs> oh, buddy. It's okay. I know it's your buddy it. died. It's okay. Oh, every time I say the name. Hey, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, when you're out there, take yeah. a couple, here's a pigeon and a cat. Oh. You know, give me a couple fair calls. Well, the cat just killed the pigeon. All right, so you got a fat cat. That's awesome. Okay. It's just, uh, you got a satiated animal, feline. That's awesome. So, you know, remember, make his count a little bit shorter than mine, okay? <laughs> if you do, there's another cat in there for uh. you. All right? I know you're sad about your bunny. <clears throat> hey, buddy, it's <clears throat> okay. It's okay. <clears throat> yeah. It's all right, bud. <clears throat> Oh, my God. This is a dog I'm talking to. <laughs> Monk uh, was stockier and five inches taller than Paul Kelly. So Paul Kelly was four foot two? But Paul Kelly was started out as a boxer before he turned into a gangster. So uh, Okay. Um, both guys had a corner man. Sure. A cut man. A cut man, a corner man. Uh, each round went on until one fighter was knocked down. Okay. Uh, the corner man had a minute to wake up his guy or the fight was over. Okay, a minute. A minute. So CTE, prominent. Yeah. Both Monk and Kelly went down multiple times, but were able to keep fighting. The fight went on for close to two hours. Holy shit. Yeah, it's not great. It's really bad. This is a bad thing. Wow. Yeah. They finally both collapsed from exhaustion, but kept trying to hit each other from the ground. Okay, so how does it's, that work? It's the best. I don't care. It's kind the of best. sleep fighting? It's M- 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 MMA kind of thing. Right, okay. MMLA. Around. Yeah. Uh, they were pulled apart, and the fight was declared a draw. So what does that mean? Right. So it means that nobody wins, and the, <laughs> and the disputed territory is <coughs> still up for grabs. Okay. So how do you... Some, some said it was fixed. But they had a sad rabbit. Uh, well, they also punched each other for two hours, so I'm not sure, sure that's true. <laughs> On February 2nd, 1904, Monk and a buddy, Chris Wallace, saw a shit-faced guy 
uh, come out of Jack's All Night Restaurant. He's standing on the street, and the guy takes out his money and start ca- starts counting it. Well, so this man is asking to be robbed. And yelling, rob me! <laughs> so much money! Um, Monk and Wallace saw two guys standing nearby about to rob him, so they stepped in and robbed him first. Not, which is the nice thing to do. Yeah. Step in and you commit the crime That's before right. the bad guys do. Yeah, hometown. Yeah, hometown exactly. Hometown advantage. Um, so they take the guy's money, but the other two guys weren't robbers. Turned out they were Pinkertons. Oh, boy. Who had been hired to keep an eye on the drunk guy who was a rich kid. What a weird situation that is, too. Yeah. So the Pinkertons just started shooting. Okay. Because they're Pinkertons. Right. Monk and Wallace pulled out their guns and shot back. No one's hitting each other. Because they're Monk and Wallace. Yeah. Right. Uh, They ran and shot as they went uh, as the Pinkertons chased and shot back. But the only damage that occurred from the shootout was when Monk ran out of bullets and threw his gun at a Pinkerton and it smashed through the window of a store and onto a teacup set. Oh, no. My tea. (laughs) So my mother was there? Now the English are upset. Oh, yeah. Well, 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 you could do what you want, but the second you smash a good tea set, you've crossed a line, sir. A cop happened to be there, and he hit Monk on the head and knocked him out. Okay. Monk woke up in jail. And as usual, he didn't give a shit. He figured he'd be out soon. Right. The problem, though, was the Pinkertons. Uh. They would not take money to change their story, and they wouldn't be intimidated. That's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So all of a sudden he had a high bail slapped on him that no one could pay. Monk was charged with attempted murder, first degree and assault. And then he got hit with another charge of trying to kill a guy two weeks earlier. And also he ruined a kettle. We found another fellow. And a teacup. We've got we're four sources shy of a full set now. Criminal! Mm. Governor. Nope. Monk was found guilty of assault in the first degree. He got 10 years in Sing Sing. Wow. When he heard the sentence, he was most concerned about his pigeons. I like, I can't, I can't, (laughs) I can't not love this man. He asked the court to allow him to remain in the tombs until he could find someone to take care of his 500 birds. And the judge was like, all right. This is a better time. (laughs) I don't care what anyone says. As he was being taken to prison, a crowd of 5,000 gathered to say goodbye. Kid Twist uh, tried to run the Eastmans while Monk was in prison, but he was shot dead on May 14th by Louis the Lump. That's Louis the Lump right there. Jeez. Okay. Um, Who was a five-pointer. They fought over a woman. Uh, Paul Kelly was never able to take advantage of Monk being gone. Okay. Which you would think he would then, you know, completely take over. Right. Um, there were two attempts on Kelly's life in 1905. Uh, once he was stabbed in the back and another time he was shot, uh, three times, even though he was wounded, he was seen quote, running down the Bowery hatless in the direction of the Occidental hotel. What is he? What's his plan? What's wrong with that man? He doesn't have a hat. Uh, yeah, right. That's what everyone's talking yeah. about as he's bleeding. As he's ble- he's been shot three times. The good Lord, he doesn't have a hat. Well, hopefully someone shoots him. Oh, good. Someone has. Probably hat related. Kelly's influence became less and less. Police came under more pressure to crack down on the gangs. The Five Point, uh, Five Pointers headquarters was shut down. The gang then went into decline. They moved from Five Points to Midtown. Uh, Kelly went even further uptown to 116th Street and started working as a labor organizer. Mm. He became vice president of the Longshoremen's Association and changed his name back to uh, Paolo Vassarelli. Sure. He kept one foot in organized crime and one in labor. Okay. Which is... Well, it's nice to have options. Not very rare. Right, right. These these are the guys who started these two guys. Monk uh, got out in June 1909. There was no one waiting for him when he came out of prison. It was just a farmer there who offered him work. How which, you doing, boy? I think you could replace my tractor. <laughs> hey, you like pigs? Uh, yeah. You uh, got a job. Is there anyone else here? It's just... It's just me. Because I, when I went in, I was so popular. It just seems like... One bed. What's the deal? You like pigs? I've answered that question. One bed. For That's me a- or for the pigs? 
All of us. Did, did you, did people think I was getting out later? No one here but me. Your friend. Pigman. Your name again is? Pigman. Well, your eyes are open, so that is um, particularly troubling. Are you sleeping or? You want a job? Oh, my God. You're the pig, aren't you? Oh, they told me about guys like you inside. You need a job, don't you? Look, dude, I'm not pig banging you, okay? No one said anything. I'm not playing slam pig. I've heard about this game. All right, fine. Come on. Get in a truck. <laughs> you can sit up front with Pig Daddy. So he took the job. He reported to a parole officer. He took office. the job? Yeah. He had so not, he walks outside he had to, and there's a... Shut up. He, he walked outside and there's a fucking farmer waiting for him. He, the first thing he says is, do you want to come work for me? It's a simpler time. That's just too simple. <laughs> Also, isn't it good that ex-cons can get jobs? I just, uh, look, I think he needed ZipRecruiter. He did need ZipRecruiter. Just a quick, an option, some options. But he's also on parole and he needs to have a job and a report to his but parole Dave, officer. But if a guy, up- Dave, if a dude is just standing yeah, yeah. out okay, there, yeah. what you got? I mean, he's got a pig mask on. <laughs> yeah, I just, <laughs> he's part of Anonymous. <laughs> Okay. All right. So he he, takes he meets a guy. The first guy he meets, he's like, "Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, let's go to your farm." And it's up. He has to he has to see his parole officer up up state. So it's all it works. So yeah, no, there's not any problem with this. Um, in September, he went to a hospital for quote some internal trouble, which is causing me agony. Monk did. Yeah. Okay. Um, when his clothes were off, the doctor asked him if he had been in a war because of all the scars. Sure. Monk said yes. A half dozen wars on the Lower East Side. Hey. Hey, I got still got the funnies. Uh, After his parole was up, he headed to New York. His pigeons are gone. Sure. His cats are gone. Oh. No one wanted to have much to do with him. The old gangsters knew he was uh he knew were gone or in jail or dead. Okay. Tammany Hall didn't give a shit. He had no power. Monk started selling opium and then doing opium. Oh boy. Cops settled old scores by beating him up all the time. People constantly were informing on him just because people who hated him from back in the day would oh, just, just lie and right. say shit. Uh, still, he got married again. Okay. Uh, she was just 20. He's like 40 Okay. Uh, the cops cracked down on gangs again because there was another flare-up of fighting, and Monk was a big name for the press, so they arrested him on opium charges, and he got eight months. When he was released, the cops said if he came near New York, they would beat him daily. So and who was awaiting outside of the prison when he came? It was it another pig man or was it another option? Was it some guy who's just like, I live up in the mountains and I need a guy to help me count rocks. <laughs> well, all right. You're the guy j- waiting. Is that a job? Yeah, sort of. How does that pay? It pays in rocks. You get to keep all the weird shaped ones. And the ones that are sphere shaped, well, they go in the rock bank. How do you make? How do you live? How do you make money? We live on rock currency up here in the mountains. You're gonna love it. I seen your resume. I know you was a pig boy. You're gonna make a great fit for the rock bank. Come on up to the hills in the mountains. Okay. Live with rocks and me. It'll just be me, you, and a bunch of shale. Oh, okay. Yeah. And by the way, we gotta hold hands. Oh. That's part of your job now too. I used to run a gang. Like we used to Well, I used to paint. We all got used to. Now come on over here. Hold my hand. We got some pebbles to count. And then we're gonna put them in the rock vault. You're my best friend. (laughs) Bet you wish someone else was waiting out here with maybe another option. I died that time. Well the time I put my fingers in my tummy. Yeah, you shouldn't have fingered yourself so damn much, silly. Not done that. Now you live in a rock side with me. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I made some mistakes in my life. Well, I did too. Look at where I am. You think that I'm happy with how I I ended up? I used to be a painter. I used to paint beautiful, beautiful landscapes. But then I broke my hand one day in a bar fight and I couldn't paint no more. So then I went up to the hills and I invented a rock bank. So now it's you, me, and we just work at the bank of rock. And come on, this hand ain't gonna hold itself, son. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, you make sense. <laughs> that man definitely has a beard, by the way. <laughs> um, so uh, he went upstate. He was arrested in Buffalo in 1914. Uh, he fled to New York on another charge in 1915. So he... You know, he goes back to New York to get out of where sure. he was. Uh, he gets arrested. A crowd of a thousand people came to the train station to see uh, Monk Eastman shipped off upstate. He got two years and 11 months. When he got out, he returned to the Lower East Side where he was relentlessly harassed by police. World War I was in full swing. And at 43, Monk Eastman volunteered to fight. Whoa. This is, by the way, a guy here like, yes, for sure. This is a twist. Yeah. Uh he served in France with Orion's Roughnecks, and in one battle he was wounded and gassed but refused treatment and crawled under enemy fire to carry his wounded sergeant to safety. The sergeant said Monk saved his life. Other actions that he did were also considered heroic, and he was discharged honorably in 1919. When he was asked what he thought of the war, he said, quote, fought the Battle of New York. There were lots of dance halls in the Bowery tougher than that so-called Great War of theirs. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Because there's tons of mustard gassing in uh, the Bowery. Uh, is that true? No. Okay, yeah. I was For, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For his crimes, uh, at some point, he had lost his citizenship. Okay. So at, point, at some point, he was just like a habitual they criminal, like, so done. they took away his you're citizenship. Done. When people learned, a petition to restore it was started and signed by all his officers and almost every man in his regiment. And Governor Al Smith then restored his rights. And Monk went back to a life of petty crime. Interesting twist for a man. <laughs> it, it really felt like we were just hearing about like the comeback story. And then the second that he's kind of back on like equal land, he's like, yeah, you know what? I should probably, I'm going to kill a guy. <laughs> the day after Christmas, 1920, he was meeting with other men at the Bluebird Cafe in Lower Manhattan. Around 4 a.m., the men got into an argument over money. And By Monk, the way, any meeting that is happening at 4 a.m.? It's not great. It's not great. It's drinking. Yeah. Um, Monk and a guy named Jerry Bohan really got into it. They were partners. Bohan was a corrupt prohibition agent. And Bohan left, and Monk followed him out into the street and accused him of being a thief. Bohan then shot Monk several times with a pistol, and Monk Eastman was dead. Oh, shit. Uh, they had a funeral with full military honors. They held a full military procession through the streets of Brooklyn as a crowd of 10,000 watched. He was buried with a f full military honors at Cypress Hills Cemetery. Uh, his murderer served three years in prison. His murderer got three, three years. Three years, yeah. Paul Kelly died in 1936. Who was in charge of sentence? Like, sentencing was, back then was just like you rolled like an eight-sided die? Yeah, but a lot of countries think rehabilitation is the way to go like we're, our sentencing is really fucking crazy compared to other countries yeah but uh, the sentencing are you saying like, murder should be more than three years i am i guess you could say that my point in uh if we were to condense it would be yeah this guy should have gotten more than three years for murder but i bet they took an account like well the two criminals blah 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 right yeah but a war hero a guy who has a procession going down would that i mean is he a war hero or is he a petty criminal or is he a criminal mastermind on an all-new monk uh, Paul Kelly had died in 1936 in natural causes. Uh, he just stayed as a crooked labor guy. So Jesus. those are the boys. Those are the boys. Want to see his funeral procession? Yeah. Um, I so, want to look at him again, too. So here they are carrying his casket through the street. Oh, boy. Yeah, see, it's got an American flag on it. You're giving the guy who killed him three years? Here, um, that's it. Look how many people there are. Wow. So, yeah. you know. Military hero, party boy. <laughs> I mean, he does look like a party boy. Can I see that first shot you showed me again? Of the... Of, him. Of uh, him. Oh, of him? Yeah. His very first picture? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's some shit, man. Yeah, that, that face tells some stories. That guy's been in so many fights. Jesus. So, I really... This, like, is, it a, is that... Let me ask you this. Is that a more messed up time, or is now a more messed well, up that's, time? Well, that's what I'm... I don't know. Like, so it's more messed up in the sense that more people are dying from yeah. diseases. And, I mean, are they though? I mean, well, but in so general, it's now. in general, but, it sounds like basically the the 
general street violence was higher. So you well, are we probably talking about, had, are we talking about crime is crime worse? I'm talking about the system. I mean, what's the difference between Tammany Hall and what we have now? Exactly. Like they're just letting people die from opioids and um, the health care system is killing people massively. Yeah. And that's all straight up corruption. Fossil fuels are killing tons and, of people. They're doing nothing about it. And and the argument would be that like in order to get away from a system like the one, the time that Monk lived in, that's why we have, that's why we live in a surveillance state. Yeah. But really all we've sacrificed in a surveillance state is our privacy yeah. for probably no real benefit if you were to like put it all on the scales of oh, none. positive. None. No, there's no benefit. They, they're not stopping any of the shootings that are happening. They're not stopping any of the things that are going on. What this podcast needs to become, and I think this is party, how we treat... A party boy podcast. This is how we treat the back nine. A pig party boy podcast. This is what we do. Okay. We get a time machine... And we go to other times and read them stories about now <laughs> and watch them be like, wait, what happens? What do you guys develop? I mean, look, there was, there was, uh, I mean, there's a whole section. There's a giant part. It's Manhattan and it's just like whatever goes, you know, right. and the gangs control everything. And, and, but then again, you think about now and. The cops are gangs, and exactly like, like the cops in Chicago tortured all these people, and, and the, the cops are killing black people left and right. Yeah, and the and the way that and they like, have Punisher tattoos, and you know, there's gangs. Like I said, there's sheriff gangs here that have tattoos that are fucking gang members, um, a sheriff gang. Uh, so uh, fuck, I don't know. Like it seems better, but it's and it, weird. And it's just that it, I think that's really what it is. They've just made it seem better. It seems better, but we're obviously on the verge of something very catastrophic happening and really some bad shit going down. So in a couple of years, we'll people. probably be like the monk era made a lot more sense. <laughs> right? When you could just a cop, he'd be like, what's your name? And you'd be like, uh, I'm Scott Weiland. I was I mean, in the Stone Temple Pilots. You could look at like and say, oh, Tammany was fixing elections, but all of our elections are fixed. There's gerrymandering. They don't let black people vote. There's just all this fucking nonsense going on. The, uh, our president loses by three million votes. Um, it's all bullshit. Yeah. The whole system is fucking garbage. Right. And then, and then they're just all paid off to fucking take money and tell people to fuck off. And there's probably some people who listen to this and are like, they can't get political about this episode. <laughs> we will find a way. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I just think that, you know, like at least ballot stuffing. It, yeah, right. It's, it's, like, an, it's almost an honest see, dishonesty. It's, 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 you can see it. Yeah. You can catch someone doing it. Yeah. As opposed to electronic voting without paper trails and gerrymandering, like you said. And it's like, those are. I mean, in truth, a guy. Those are noxious gases. In truth, a guy like this now becomes. Um, a governor. <laughs> or, yeah. Or, or, or uh, a guy who fucking runs a bank. Like, they're yeah, sociopaths. Right, yeah, right. They're sociopaths. Yep. Also, they're fucking killing people like crazy and fucking people over left and right. And they don't give a shit. Like, this guy. Based on his smarts and what he did, he would be a leader of some sort sure. and just find the white collar way to go to, you know, make his empire and be his thing. Yeah. Well, if you kill someone as a white collar criminal, you're fine. You're fine. You literally did nothing in their opinion. Yeah. How many people went to jail after the last collapse? What is it? None. Bankers? None. <laughs> What's the number? It's uh, zero. That's an interesting number. It huh? is an interesting number, isn't it? Yeah. We're all well, good times. Is it? Nope. Aaron, how do you feel about America? I'm going to leave it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Love it or leave it. Um, yeah. And here I was just thinking Monk was a Tony Shalhoub vehicle. I know, right? So mistaken. I would love to fucking go back in time and meet guys like this. Oh, man. I mean... Right? Yeah. You just don't get to meet people like that. No, just to honestly, just to be a fly on the wall for this air, just to be like, oh my god, that's him. Yeah, and just sit there and listen to him. You and just watch him like plugging his bullet holes. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like, dude, you are an, you are, believe me, a machine. <laughs> and literally, yeah. all we'd have to do to get to know him is wait outside the jail and just like give a better pitch hey, than a farmer. Yeah. Oh my God! I'm offering a cot and some pigs. I got a rock bank. 
Hi, uh, this is uh, Dave. I'm Gareth. Uh, we, um, we do a just podcast. Wanna hang out. And by the way, <laughs> we it's just be hard wanna, for us to explain uh, you what that is. But you're going to talk into a thing that looks like a microphone. Well, whatever. It looks like a stick with a, a foam on it. Right. And you just talk into that for like an hour tops. Sometimes we go over. And of course, it's one that didn't record. God damn it. Oh, my God. Jesus. Fuck, I didn't hit record. We went to 1901. <laughs> didn't record. Fuck. <laughs> the guy seemed cool, too. He's like, we got it. <laughs> All right. Mm. Godspeed, everybody. Gobble, gobble. We uh, love you, and uh, we love each other. That's the main thing. We don't fight. Um, Never fought. We're we fought. For we each fought. Other. What, how many times did you say we fought? I'd say like three or four times. If even that. Yeah, and even then they're just like we're just do we get discussions. A tizzy at each yeah, because you spend yeah, but the, yeah, that, is, get, I, yeah. that is what's so great about the internet and Reddit. <laughs> People, boy, do they reach an issue. Oh yeah, no. No, yeah, you just, yeah. it is. That guy was like, I'm going to bring all my childhood problems into this podcast. Mother and father despise each other. I'm in my room without supper again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we got our, uh, we got our corporate, uh, corporate hood um, stuff. So we're moving forward quickly with um, Planet Change 10 and getting the website up. Yes. And exciting things coming on that end too. Cool. Hopefully. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks everybody. God speed. God, God loves. God, God, God loves. God bless. Pigs. God bless. Nightmares. Pig noises.